Hey friends, today we're going to continue the mission of trying to get people to understand latency within Ableton Live. And in this case, we're going to be using a MIDI-enabled hardware synthesizer uh, and explore all that Ableton can do to help address potential latency issues in that case, okay? So the first things first, I am playing this Novation Peak synthesizer with a MIDI controller, okay? And the MIDI controller is going through Ableton Live. So check out how much latency I've got. I've got a lot. So just look at my hands and you can hear just how much latency I've got going on. So much, okay? So let's break this down a bit. First of all, I'm playing a MIDI controller and it's going through Ableton Live and then I am getting the software to play the audio back to me. Now, in order to hear that software playback, I have to turn this track onto auto or in, okay? Either one of the, the monitor for this track has to be auto or in. Now, I made a whole video on why this imparts latency, okay? So if you wanna check that out, it's just gonna be up here in the top corner, and that's a really good video. And this, this is kind of the follow-up to that video, so I highly recommend you watch that. So obviously, I can't use the auto switch because there's too much, too much latency to play, all right? So let's take a look at how we can mitigate that. Instead, I can record with this track set to off, but if I play, I can't hear the synth now. So let's break that down a bit. Check this out. So this is my audio interfaces uh, mixer, okay? Every single audio interface has something like this. Whether it be controlled on the software or on the unit itself, there's a way to mute or unmute the inputs. This is what's called direct monitoring, okay? What that means is that the audio coming out of this into this sound card can be piped directly to the outputs instead of going through the software, okay? So most of the time when you have these plugged in for the first time, your inputs are usually muted because it kind of foolproofs the system and allows people to hear their audio through the software. In this case, we don't want that because we want instant audio. I want to be able to play these keys and hear my synth instantly, right? So the way that I would do that is unmute the track that it's coming down. At this point, it's coming down track one. So now I can hear it again, right? Back in Ableton, we have no way of hearing it because the monitor is set to off. Now, there's a little bit less latency, but it's still not playable. What I want to show you next is if you go up to the options up here, you can do reduced latency when monitoring. What this does is this toggles off the delay compensation, okay, for the track that I'm presently on, which is this one right now. So now, boom, perfect, perfect, no latency. Now you might be wondering, well, what's delay compensation? I thought that there was just system latency that I needed to worry about. Well, there's actually multiple ways that the Ableton system can have latency. Let's go ahead and look at the preferences. So here in the preferences, you can see that my input latency is 18.2, output is 12.2. So basically it's saying my overall latency is 30.5 milliseconds. Now, this is system latency, okay? System latency is different than delay compensation, okay? Let's talk about delay compensation. Now, why does there need to be delay compensation at all? You can actually see that this is checked right here, delay compensation, leave this checked, trust me, you want that. Let's look at the master track. Now. I have a limiter on this set, okay? This is a, a FabFilter Pro L2, a great limiter. I love this thing. But it causes a little bit of plug-in delay, all right? How can you see the plug-in delay? On any device in Ableton, if you hover over the title bar, you can see down in the left-hand corner, 65.2 milliseconds. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of delay. Why? Well. Some plugins need what's known as look-ahead time. They need to hear the audio before they can react to it, right? And so they need a little time to process. Other plugins and devices don't need any. Let's look at this EQ8. This EQ8, for example, as you can see down on the bottom corner, no samples. There is no uh, plugin delay whatsoever that it needs. It doesn't need any time to process, right? So the sum total, however, of all the plugins in this set, here's another plugin, for example, this Corpus is adding 1.5 milliseconds. This cassette, which is a great, great plugin, I love it. It's also adding 1.4 milliseconds. So as you can see, there's a lot of delay, okay? Now, with the compensation set on, okay, delay compensation, 
What that means is that now the entire system is compensated so that all these tracks will fire at the same time. Everything will line up perfectly in time. That's why that exists, okay? Whenever you add a plugin to your set that needs a little bit of processing time, and you will because the compressors, uh, certain overdrives, all kinds of different plugins within Ableton and outside of Ableton, like VST plugins and audio units, d certain ones will add certain amounts of delay, okay? Now, the system compensates for that, but what is not compensated for is your input. So what you do is if you click on this reduce latency when monitoring, this will toggle off that delay compensation for the audio coming in from a hardware synth. Now, if you're confused, good, because there's actually a much better solution for all this, okay? That's external instrument. So I'm gonna go back over to my sound card. I'm muting the first track, all right? So no longer is it being straight, coming straight from the audio interface, okay? Now, I'm also gonna turn these channels off, all right? I've got this riff, okay, that I've recorded with my keyboard, and I'm gonna turn external instrument on. So, what's going on here? The peak is receiving MIDI down channel one, and this is the riff, okay? It also, this external instrument device is receiving the audio back from the peak into track one, okay? Isn't that cool? So, within one plugin, we get the audio back and the MIDI out, right? And it's sitting on a MIDI track. How cool is that? So now I can play this audio. What? It's perfect. Even if I turn off reduce latency when monitoring, listen. So you might be like, well, how? That's crazy, that's awesome. Yes, it totally is awesome. And let's explain what's going on here. First of all, we're gonna hover over the top. The processing time that this device takes is exactly how long your system latency is, all right? Let's see if I can explain that better. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna turn my buffer, my buffer down to where I like to have it, 128. Now, it says 13.1 milliseconds is my system latency. Boom, 13.1 milliseconds, do you see that? So I'm gonna put this back. So, that's great, it's compensating for the system latency. But let's talk about something else. Because this is a device, this is an Ableton device, it's also, guess what? I bet some of you can already guess. Yes, it's also compensating for the plugin delay because the plugin delay is calculated prior to this thing going on, right? So now I can play this audio and I can even change things about my patch, right? Right? I can change different things on my synth and record it. The other thing that I can do, and this is one of the best, most awesome things about external instruments, is that I can now use Ableton devices and plugins to process my synth, and it's all happening in real time. Check this out. Okay, <laughs> I hope you can see the power here. This is incredible. So let's look at something else. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to record external instrument, this track, into an audio track. And yeah, real quick, I know I've been harping on this a lot recently, but I'm just so excited about this. My Ableton courses are almost here, everybody. The songwriting and composition course is complete, and the mixing course is coming right along. Uh, so if you like my teaching style, you enjoy listening to my voice, you enjoy the way that I teach, um, I highly recommend that you put your email in the link that I'm providing here so that I can let you know when those courses are finally released and we get this thing underway. All right, let's get back at it. Now let's talk about maybe how you would capture this, okay? Because, you know, maybe you've got something going. You're like, man, this is really great. I need to capture this to audio. Okay, so the first thing you could do is you could right-click on your external instrument track and freeze it, okay? But what I, I think is a better move is to leave this kind of unaffected and then add a new track choose the input as the external instrument. So in this case, it's track 17, right? And then choose post mixer. What this is gonna do is I'm gonna be able to capture not only the external instrument audio from the, the peak, but I can also capture these audio effects. So let's do it. 
So then all I need to do is arm the track and of course make sure that the monitor switch is set to off because we don't need, we're monitoring through external instrument, right? Let's go. Okay, so now that we've captured our audio, let's take a look at it. So as you can see, it's pretty good. But for those of you sticklers out there, if I zoom in close enough, uh-oh, we're just barely, barely off. Just barely, the smallest amount, right? Let's break this down a bit. Now, external instrument has another feature called hardware latency. So believe it or not, this is a third way that you, that you can have latency within the Ableton world, okay? The third way is a way that Ableton can't compensate for, okay? What Ableton can't compensate for is the device itself. How long does this device take to process the MIDI that it's receiving and send the audio down that cable into the audio interface? It can't possibly know how long that is because each synthesizer is gonna do this at a different rate. Turns out the peak is pretty damn good. It's pretty close, right? Look at that. So what I can do is I can actually figure out what my hardware latency is and compensate for it. So if I right click, I'll turn off this grid. So let's find a spot where I can really clearly see the system latency, all right? Okay, so I'm zooming in. And as you can see, the note starts right about there, and I just need to scroll to the beginning. I've selected an area of time, okay? At this point, it says, if you look down on the bottom left-hand corner, it says duration, two milliseconds, okay? So, two milliseconds is how long my hardware latency is, okay? So what I can do is I can delete this track now, go to external instrument, and add two milliseconds of, <laughs> of hardware latency, okay? And now... What I'll do is I'll turn my grid back on and record yet again. And the external instrument is going to compensate for that tiny, tiny, minuscule uh, amount of hardware latency, right? There's hardly any there, but let's just go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, so let's zoom in, and as you can see, we're right on the money, right on the money. Okay, so, so yeah, as you can see, external instrument is amazing. There really is no reason not to be using this incredible device if you own a hardware synthesizer instrument. Um, hardware synthesizers in general are really great. Um, it's, it's great to have something that's hands-on that's outside of this virtual backlit screen that's just blasting your eyeballs all day. It kind of helps you just kind of focus, you know? So if you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.